Hello, um, I'm Rob Hedge, I'm a finds archaeologist for the Archive and Archaeology Service here and this is my colleague, senior finds archaeologist and pottery specialist Jane Evans. Hello. We've got a rather fine <laughs> set of finds. <laughs> This was discovered on uh, Monday afternoon at a site we're excavating at the moment out at Broadway in South East Worcestershire and uh, it was unexpected. Most of the site seems to be late Bronze Age to early Iron Age, there's some Roman activity, possibly some Saxon too, but this came and hit us between the eyes right out of the early Bronze Age. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic. Um, I think people have already seen images of the pot on site, haven't they? Yes, yeah. So it's been care carefully lifted and brought back. And we're just at the stage now where th we're thinking about trying to remove the pottery from the contents, um, which is going to have to be done very careful. It's carefully, it's very heavy clay soil, and the pottery's damp and quite soft. So we're going to think about how, how to do that without damaging the pot anymore. And the other thing with the fill of the pot is that, of course, you might have um, finds and further finds in there that we want to look at, or environmental evidence. We want to look at perhaps the evidence for pollen, because it's possible um, there might have been liquids or something in the vessel when it was buried. Yes. Some yeah. libations. Um, it's one of the sort of classic theories about beakers, isn't it? They're yeah. beakers because they're supposed to be drinking vessels. Yeah. And some of them have yielded residues that might suggest they're being used to hold mead or ale or something, but it'd be really nice to get yeah. a decent residue. So, yes, there's a lot of careful, careful work to, to separate the pottery out and think about dealing with the soil to get as much information from that as well, to think about how, how the pot was used um, before it was buried. Then we've got... Um, this is interesting. This looks, the decoration is exactly the same. And we haven't got it to join yet, but it looks like it comes from the same vessel. It does, yeah. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't actually found next to this beaker. It was um, detached a bit in the same pit, but moved away. So there's a bit of debate about, about how that's happened, whether it was, if it is part of that beaker, whether it was separated before it was buried whether the feature has been disturbed later. Yes. I think the rich should have a theory. Yeah, so. um, the absence of bone is really puzzling. Um, beakers are almost always found in burial contexts. Um, they're associated with these kind of quite often quite elaborate early Bronze Age burials, but there's no human bone in this whatsoever really bizarre, but yet there is survival of very small and quite delicate pieces of animal bone, like this little piece of, looks like bird bone down there. So where's the human bone? We know sometimes beakers um, were used in sort of cenotaph burials where you might have a set of grave goods representing a burial, but there's no body itself. But in this case, the pit is kind of of a size that would suggest it's had an inhumation, mm. but there are We've got to unpick all of this, but there are some hints from the deposits that were excavated. It, it kind of looks like something has gone in there, and either someone in prehistory has dug out that body and, and moved it somewhere else, or possibly the grave might have been looted later on. Um, beaker burials are a, are a common target for looters because they sometimes contain shiny things, um, gold. We've had no metal work at all out of this one, mm. but that's not necessarily uncommon. We do have a number of different pots. Jane, do you want to sort of talk about the other vessels? Yes, we've got? I mean these these were associated with the beaker, but um, these ones here and these ones, which are from uh, I think from the fill above, have got um, quite different decoration on them. I don't know whether these ones. We wondered whether they might have actually been done using. Um, bird bone yes. anyway, so it would be fun if we could work out whether it was actually that bird bone, this pot was made specifically for this, and this one has been impressed as well, but it's a kind of cruder decoration, and this one as well, which has got, yeah. um, it's hard, hard to see on the camera isn't it, but it's got just, um, quite a distinct shape yeah. on the top of the rim there, yeah. coming out, going in and then coming out again. So um, again, that's an, that's another beaker form, but 
part of the challenge now as well is going to be looking at the form of the beaker and the different types of decoration and trying to match them up with evidence from other sites. Try and get yeah. some, some parallels and dates. I managed, because we've got this, this piece of pottery here, I managed to have a look at the fabric of that. And that's got grub, grub temper in it. Mm. With sand, so I, if it is from that, that's, that's useful to know. Yeah. <laughs> at this stage. We've got some fantastic other stuff as well, haven't we? Um, the flint artefacts are, are, are particularly nice. There's one fairly grotty barbed and tanged arrowhead here, but there's an exceptionally fine barbed and tanged arrowhead there. Um, and there's also this kind of bizarre, I've never quite seen anything quite like this. Um, gonna have to do some research. It seems to be formed off a single flake, but very carefully prepared. So it's come out as this kind of like isosceles trapezoid. Um, this peculiar little kind of shape there. Yeah. Um, it's really unusual, very, very fine, very carefully worked, and a, a, a kind of fairly standard flint knife as well. But one of my favourites, um, I've never seen one of these before, uh, is this one here. It's an antler object, a piece of worked antler, tapering to a rounded point, and they're called antler spatulas. And the theory is that they were probably used for pressure flaking. Um, which is the removal of very, very fine, tightly controlled flakes of flint to create the kind of beautifully worked artefacts like the barbed and tanged arrowheads we've got there. And one of those was found with the Amesbury archer. Yes, that's right, yes. There are a lot of parallels in this to sort of some of those early beaker assemblages that are, that are coming into this country around about 2400 BC mm. and onwards. Um, so I'd be really interested to see where ours fits in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, there's a lot of lot of background reading to be done and a lot of research.